Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Special thanks to KPMG for hosting the event and uh, for the upscale tech community team and uh, the marketing team of KPMG for organizing and making it possible. Uh, about the agenda, uh, instead of introducing upscale, uh, let us just uh, show you a video about us. Uh, I will ask one of my colleagues to start the video. It will be a four minutes video, which will talk about us upscale. And then we will start immediately with the presentation of Michael. And then we will continue with a panel conversation with, with uh, uh, Marci, uh, Valenge, Zeno, and, uh, and Vani. So, Sabra should be moderating the discussion. So, thank you very much for coming again. And, uh, I'm not sitting here. There is a good music behind it. Anyway, no worries. The video is available in the website, so feel free to check it out.
Thank you very much for the video. And now that we pass the word to Michael, just please send this term on the microphone here as well. And, uh, Okay. Okay. Um, let's begin. My name is Marilyn Michael. And I'm currently working in upscale as a data scientist. And today I will um, I will introduce to you with my project, uh, like personal project that I developed with one of my uh, partners. Um, uh, it was a project about uh, predicting uh, stock and cryptocurrency prices using uh, AI. And in this lecture, I will give you a brief overview of uh, the methods that we use the its advantages and disadvantages and our problems that and mistakes that uh, we made uh, on our past. Um, at the end, I will include some promising methods that we will uh, that will, we will use later in our investigation. So um, let's begin. Um, yes. Uh, so in this lecture, we will go from the simplest models, like uh, statistical ones, to the most complicated, uh, like uh, L scale. And uh, uh, let's start this lecture with a positive note by uh, reviewing a hint about cryptocurrencies uh, predictions and stock predictions. And uh, the new suggests that uh, it is impossible to predict uh, cryptocurrency prices. But uh, as the quote states, um, uh, every mistake is only a mistake when uh, you are not uh, when you are not learning from from it. So, and we will begin uh, from the first from the first uh, part, and this is and this is a statistical uh, statistical family, and uh, the first. Uh, the first what I'm going to talk about is the uh, um, uh, moving average, and uh, this is quite a simple statistical model that uh, just takes the mean the mean of uh, last uh, last n uh, uh, prices, and then plot upon the graph, and it can uh, it can help you to uh, understand the temporal trend. But uh, we also have some disadvantages. For example, it is impossible to predict uh, uh, to predict with uh, more fast movements with it because it only can predict more or less stable uh, stable trends. And uh, let me give you an example. Uh, for example, you are trying to predict uh, uh, the price of uh, a new cryptocurrency called. And then Elon Musk just decided to change the Twitter icon to uh, the Dobby symbol. And uh, as a result, the price skyrocketed over 20%. And you will definitely not be able to capture such uh, movement by uh, movement average. Uh, moving average. You can see uh, the 50 days moving average in green and the uh, Nine day moving average in blue. And as you can see from the slide, uh, uh, the nine day moving average only reacted to such, uh, to such movement after nine days of uh, the real data. So uh, uh, this method is not really, it's not really perfect to, 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 to make any predictions. It only can help you to analyze the general trend in the market. Um, let's take a look on uh, some times of, uh, of moving averages. Uh, there is actually two main types, the simple moving average and uh, weighted moving average. 
while the simple moving average just takes the mean of n past days. So basic moving average if uh, the weights to the each data point. And for example, the most uh, popular weighted moving average is the exponential one, and it uh, uh, it gives more uh, more weight to the most recent data and all uh, all the past uh, all the past data is uh, gives less weight. So okay. And uh, the really big advantage of uh, moving average is that it is really easy to understand, and it is really good alternative for um, a short time series. But uh, disadvantages as uh, uh, can really uh, can really be harmful for your models. So it is better to use a more sophisticated algorithms. For example, uh, uh, Arima. Algorithm and ARIMA stands for auto regressive integrated moving average, and it generally consists of uh, uh, three main parts. The so after regression part uh, captures the uh, relationship between the current values and the past values. The integration part transforms non stationary data, data to the stationary one, and the moving average part. Uh, model the relationship between the current value and the past values. Um, so uh, let's go to, to our first and uh, the most uh, fundamental mistakes that we made on our past. It's about um, uh, data data stationarity. Uh, on this slide, on the slides, you can see the non-stationary data and the stationary data. And uh, the stationary data is uh, uh, is the data where the most um, important statistical features, for example, average and mean, uh, is something stable over the time. So uh, it has no trend or seasonality. But uh, some algorithms uh, uh, requires data to be stationary unless they will just not work uh, properly. And um, uh, some modern algorithms, for example, neural network, they actually can uh, deal with non stationary data, but uh, at the same time, they will, um, uh, they will, they will just perform better if you made uh, reprocessing and made it and you make the data stationary. Um, okay, let's go. Uh, let's go to ARIMA advantages and disadvantages. And uh, ARIMA is a really flexible algorithm, and you can extend it to, for example, um, get rid of seasonality or get rid of uh, or improving the result by adding, say, new regression models. But uh, at the same time, uh, it takes uh, a lot of effort uh, to tune the model, to adjust its parameters, to make it uh, make it work actually good. And uh, um, actually, it requires the data to be uh, linear. So the data should have the linear dependency on um, it, and it's actually. Uh, can be a problem, and at the same time, it uh, requires data to be stationary, or at least uh, the data should be should be able to convert into the stationary data. And uh, to to the regret, it is not always possible. Uh, so uh, let's go to let's go to another another part. It's uh, actually the regression family uh, of uh, algorithms, and uh, it consists uh, that we should definitely be influenced by linear regression, and it can be considered as uh, um, as a hello world for all data scientists because it's easily to it's easy to implement and it's uh, easy to comprehend. But at the same time, the usual linear regression can work can work well, uh, even 
even as well as more sophisticated algorithms, but not not in uh, not in the old cases. Um, the underlying theory uh, in um, uh, in the near regression is pretty simple. You should be able to find uh, the constants. Uh, in that case, uh, it would be better zero and better one. That would fit the uh, that would fit the uh, data as 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 much as possible. And uh, usually, it uh, it is made by uh, adjusting weights. In uh, in error net, let me talk uh, a bit about about it. Like the the weights is uh, uh, in that situation, it's better one and better two, or uh, in the left in the left bottom corner, it's the matrix of weights. And uh, uh, in more complex error nets, uh, the weights represents the uh, um, Course between different neurons in neural network, and weights are iteratively adjusted to improve the model performance by uh, by minimizing the loss function of uh, the algorithm. And uh, and it it is made by uh, it is usually made by al algorithms that cause a back propagation in which the weights. Uh, um, the weights are changing to improve the model, uh, the model quality, the model accuracy, and uh, overall um, overall result. Um, okay, but what if the underlying data has not near um, has not a near dependency? In that uh, in that uh, in that case, we would not be able to use any of uh, linear models, and we should use more uh, complex models called non-linear regressions. And it uh, just use more complicated functions to better adjust uh, the data and uh, to make the predictions on, on it. Um, but uh, by using the more uh, uh, by using the more complex functions, uh, we can uh, we can face this uh, the problem of underfitting and overfitting. And uh, the underfitting is uh, the case when the model cannot uh, uh, predict uh, cannot predict no uh, neither training values nor test values. And uh, on the other hand, the overfitting is uh, uh, is the case when the model predicts good the trade data, but cannot predict uh, the new uh, unseen data. And uh, let's imagine that we have perfectly uh, tuned model, and it would be the uh, right top corner. It's a low. It, the model would have low bias and low variance, and for us, it's a perfect. Uh, it's a perfect case. But in case, for example, of uh, overfitting, the model will have high variance but uh, low bias. And uh, in case of underfitting, it, it would have uh, either uh, uh, high bias and either high, high variance. Uh, so it is really important to choose to choose the perfect model parameters and perfect model uh, 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 and the perfect model uh, in general to uh, overcome those problems. And uh, actually it is uh, this is a really uh, a really big task to choose the model complex complexity to find an optimal values to make it as no uh, underfitting. Uh, neither uh, over and so uh, the one way of doing so is to make uh, to make to make more so to to use more sophisticated algorithms and we will now uh, look for some of them 
uh, it is rich regression, the first thing for them. And uh, its advantages is that we can reduce uh, multiple linearity. It's a, it's a problem when uh, there is some uh, redundant, redundant data in our inputs. And uh, also, it can prevent overfitting by added uh, hyperparameter that would uh, reduce the variable, uh, the variables that uh, that we are not needed to need. And actually, it is more robust than uh, than usual linear regression. Uh, but at the same time, as uh, uh, as all models with uh, hyperparameters. It requires a uh, uh, fine tuning uh, of like uh, choosing of the best values of the parameter that uh, make the model uh, work good. And also, it assumes that uh, the data is linear. Uh, and and actually, the most uh, the most big problem of of all neuronets is that it's not interpretable. So we cannot just see on the net and uh, and understand why we would choose, for example, to buy stock or, or for example, sell stock. And uh, we will uh, we will uh, we will we will discuss this a little bit later. Now uh, let's go to another algorithm. This last regression, and uh, this is a really uh, good algorithm because it. Uh, uh, it helped us to reduce the model complexity by uh, getting rid of uh, some values because of its uh, hyperparameter, the structure of its hyperparameter, it can uh, reduce the variables that are redundant in our data. So it is really a good instrument, good tool for teacher selection. And uh, by uh, reducing the number of features, we can reduce the model complexity in general. So it will be easier to train it, and uh, actually it will be easier to um, uh, to interpret it because uh, the number of features will be will be less. And uh, uh, at the same time, it has some disadvantages, like every algorithm has. Um, for example, it, it can eliminate uh, like really important features, and uh, uh, it requires fine tuning as well. And actually, the fun big problem that of all uh, I I want, I want to underline of all uh, linear uh, regression models is that is it assumes the linear regression does that the linear relationship. Um, Uh, let's 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 take a look on the mirror to to make it more easy to to have a rest. So and now we are heading towards uh, the new algorithms. Uh, this uh, let's say three family algorithms. And uh, as a first, I want to talk about uh, the decision the decision tree algorithm. Uh, this is the algorithm that iteratively splits the data into smaller subset, and then uh, uh, it uh, makes some predictions. Uh, in, it makes um, some predictions from their subset, making a tree-like model. And uh, the really big advantage of such algorithm is that it it is extremely. Uh, uh, is extremely interpretable. So you you literally can see how the algorithm decides whether you should buy stock or sell stock. And uh, it can it can more or less easily uh, handle the non-linear data. And uh, it is like this algorithm is really efficient, but at the same time it can be unstable. Um, uh, and uh, it tends to overthinking, and uh, that's the last problem. Is as you as you can notice, this is a problem of, uh, that has a lot of uh, different algorithms. But also, there are some methods to actually to overcome that problem. 
and one of them is uh, using the random forest instead of just usual uh, uh, usual tree. And the random forest algorithm just combines the decision tree with uh, ensemble learning. It learns actually uh, a lot of uh, small trees, make some prediction, and then take uh, the mean of all predictions, the average. So it would uh, it would be this model will uh, uh, will be will be less overheated, and uh, uh, it is actually really fast to train. And uh, the really big disadvantage of such model is the computationally expensiveness because it is uh, for, for example, train uh, 600 trees, you know, like in that model, we would need uh, extremely big uh, resources, especially when you, uh, especially when, when you're using uh, a large data set. Um, and it, uh, it is, it has a limit in inter interpretability in comparison with uh, the usual decision tree because uh, here we we like using a lot of trees and we cannot uh, we cannot know for sure from each tree and from each numbers of trees the uh, random forest make its prediction. Um, another algorithm that can help us in reducing uh, overheating is the uh, gradient heating algorithm. And the underlying underlying theory is pretty simple, but it's iteratively. Uh, it's actually also the ensemble learning algorithm, and it iteratively adds a uh, new model that train on the error of the previous one, and uh, it makes this algorithm really flexible because uh, you can actually add uh, different models. Uh, for example, you can use just simple, uh, simple decision trees, uh, or uh, like as in this slide. Or for example, you can use uh, linear regression models or even neural network. But at the same time, uh, if you are using uh, neural network, it first can be resource consuming, and second, it will tend to overheat because the the, the more complicated model you use, the more it uh, it leads to to poverty. So um, let's go to to actually uh, let's go to actually neural network, and we will uh, uh, we will discover the really. Uh, really is a veteran of all time predictions is the recurrent neural network. And uh, the main point of this uh, this model is that it can handle the uh, let's say hide hidden state or we can we can call it memory that can remember the uh, previous uh, the previous input and then used to make the new one. Uh, but at the same time, it has some uh, disadvantages. For example, that uh, it's prone to uh, the problem that called uh, vanishing gradient problem, and uh, also it's a computationally expensive model, and it cannot be cannot be interpreted as uh, as simple as the previous models that we discussed, and it. Uh, it really sensitive to um, fine tuning or to tuning the uh, the hyperparameters of this model. Um, so let me talk a bit about the problem of vanishing gradient. Uh, as I as I said before, the vanishing uh, the gradient is uh, is a mathematical function that represents uh, um, that represents the, the direction in which we need to um, to adjust the weights to make a uh, loss of uh, overall model the less. And the problem is uh, recurrent neural network 
is that um, the model the model has a lot of layers, and when the gradient would uh, in in back propagation process, when the gradient would multiply over all of these uh, over all of these layers, it would be drastically decrease, uh, like in exponent as as I remember, in exponentially decrease, and uh, then it would just become zero. And that's why the reference neural network cannot uh, remember, let's say, uh, the big quantity of data. And to overcome that it, that problem, uh, the more sophisticated algorithm, for example, uh, LSTM, that stands for Long Short Term Memory, was introduced. And actually, the uh, it has a slightly different, not not that actually it's a slightly different, but really different uh, architecture, different structure, and it allows the neural net to remember the uh, to to remember the uh, previous inputs for uh, uh, for the sequence, and then use them to manipulate the new the new inputs and to produce more reliable output. Um, and as disadvantages, I can uh, I can see that it, it is uh, prone to overheat. It is not inter interpretable and also it is really computationally expensive and uh, computationally consuming. And that's why in um, the JRU or gated reference unit was introduced. Uh, it has slightly different uh, architecture from uh, LSTM. Uh, it has less, uh, let's say, mathematical computations inside it, and that's why it is uh, less. It, it, it is more efficient in terms of computationally expensiveness, uh, but at the same time, it still can be a computationally expensive, but more efficient than uh, usual LSTM. But its uh, uh, its simplicity can also be a disadvantage because uh, by simplifying the model, we reducing it, uh, uh, its ability to predict uh, to predict the data uh, to predict the data group. So, uh, oh yeah. Uh, it would require much larger sample data than uh, usual uh, LSTM, but it still would uh, work good in comparison with uh, uh, this usual record error network RNA. Uh, so here you can see how how this architecture changed by time. Let's go to 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 the must, but to the last, but the one of the most fundamental fundamental problems and uh, uh, mistakes actually that we made. Uh, on the uh, left of this uh, slide, you can see as a part of uh, our predictions from our project. And as you can see, it's like perfect predictions. Uh, it, like the only one question that can be arised why aren't I a millionaire? And uh, the answer is pretty simple. Our uh, model uh, includes uh, include uh, mistakes inside it, at, and uh, this uh, this is the problem of ambiguity. Um, actually, it is a statistical issue when uh, when the uh, error term is dependent on both independent variable and the response variable, and it can be uh, it can it can uh, uh, it can arise because of uh, let's say omitted variable bias, and uh, that's uh, the problem when you uh, get rid of some really important feature that need to be in your net in your neural network, but you just omit it. You, you don't include it in uh, in your model. And that's why uh, this this omitted uh, variable go into error term 
and uh, uh, and actually it leads to less uh, uh, to more uh, bad results. And as uh, the example of such uh, omitted variable can be the, the omission of market sentiment. Uh, market sentiment can uh, uh, can be really uh, important for predicting stock prices. That's why there is a lot of project on uh, uh, in NLP on uh, analyzing the Twitter tweets about uh, stocks and, and so on and so on. And by omitting this variable, you introduce the omitted variable bias inside your model. And, the, uh, and your prediction will uh, not be uh, not not good at all, uh, not at all, but not be good actually. Um, okay, and now let's uh, let's end up with some promising methods that uh, definitely will be used in uh, with this topic in uh, the, the, the near future. Uh, the first is uh, transformers. Uh, I, I, I suppose all of you heard about ChatGPT, and actually the ChatGPT was based was built on the transformer architecture uh, that uh, using the mechanism of self attention, and this mechanism can allow you to uh, to pay attention to. Uh, Big, uh, big sequences of data and to discover the uh, parts of the sequences that, that are most most important to your prediction. And uh, it would definitely be uh, it would definitely be necessary for the time series for time series for stock predictions. And the second the second algorithm is uh, um, uh, the reinforcement learning, and uh, uh, it's uh, the all reinforcement learning consists of uh, several uh, entities, several main entities. The first one is the environment, and uh, in in our case, the environment would be would be the stock market. It's uh, the the prices, the historical prices, news, and so on and so on. And the main uh, entity that makes all predictions is the agent. Uh, agent makes its predictions uh, by using the policy. The policy is, uh, let's say, tracing algorithm. And uh, uh, agent can make some actions, for in our case, it's buy, sell, or hold. And by uh, by making such some actions, it would uh, receive a reward uh, in case of um, uh, in, in case of good movement uh, actions, or uh, uh, or it would it would be penalized by uh, uh, by making bad decisions. Um, the main types of um, a reinforcement learning that can can be used. It's like usual true learning. It's a classic reinforcement learning algorithm, and the referent and deep reinforcement learning as well. The first one combines the reinforcement learning with uh, referent neural network, and the second one combines it with uh, the deep uh, with the deep neural networks. Um, Here you can actually you can see some uh, uh, some articles and uh, GitHub links that can be useful in further further development, and uh, I would also will will use them as well. Um, and actually that's that's uh, the last slide. So thank you for your attention and. Thank you. Thank you actually.
actually make trading based on your predictions or just testing and if so how uh for now we we haven't uh we haven't made an actual trading because uh, for us it seems that the algorithm is uh, isn't working good but uh i'm i'm sure that we would make it in uh, like the recent weeks or something it depends actually. Thank you. So I guess it's like at least a uh, comment and a question. Uh, you mentioned in one of the, one of the slides that you have this uh, uh, problem arising from endogeneity. Well, the statistics is called conf confounding bias. And actually, this is one of the biggest problems in terms of modeling. And I'm surprised that you didn't mention like, any sort of like case in optimization and then graph that works because actually, this is you know, the methodology to handle. Issues. And the other thing is that, that you mentioned several times interpretability. You have to be very careful you know, when you use this word because when you have like an arm of the lab, of course you don't have this issue because you already impose a structure on the data, but you don't know whether it's true or not. You, don't, you never validate actually that this is the real world that generated the data. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about like real networks, uh, and you say that it's a specific interpretability. Yes, there are ways. So you know, let's go past you know, the stage. I and mean, we know several methods that actually are quite useful in, you know, in how you understand you know, what's going on. And just one last fact, though, I don't know who's talking about this, but there was one, one uh, thing that I would correct. You mentioned that random forest, uh, I'm not good at uh, also interpreting data. But, Actually, it is something that's called illicit uh, uh, feature importance, and random forest can directly uh, be used to highlight those features that are the most important when you try to do uh, the classification of the question is random forest. Okay, thank you for the information. As I said, thank you. Any other questions or comments? If not, then thank you very much again, Michael. It was his first presentation, to be honest. And my parents are intern in our company. Yeah, very good in this. Yeah, in English. Yeah. And very promising intern. So we hope that he will go further. And thank you very much. And now let me just introduce you to the panel members. Panel members. Merton, can you please go to the stage? Merton is from the uh, wall. And I think, sorry, the streaming will be stopped here. I, I apologize because we agreed that. Uh, it will be an internet organization, so I promise we tell lots of secrets. <laughs>